Okay. Welcome. There's plenty of seats up front, so if you're coming in, feel free to come on up towards the front. We've got lots of room today. Well, let me start with a big thank you to all of you for joining us today. It's a beautiful spring day out there and a wonderful day to be celebrating Phil, to say the very least. It's also very exciting to be celebrating this year the what I call Senior Day. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, our University of Iowa senior students have not experienced a single year without Phil's Day. So you all know better than anyone exactly what we mean by what we're celebrating today. Now, I want to express my appreciation to everyone at the foundation and beyond who've made this important and uplifting day possible. And I want to thank all of you especially for coming to hear what I know will be an inspiring talk on Life with Phil from Jerry Stead. Now, Phil's Day is the biggest effort from the UI Foundation's Student Philanthropy Initiative, which aims to show students that philanthropy is all about, what, what philanthropy is all about on our campus. It's also there to help shape University of Iowa students into the philanthropists of the future. And that's exactly what the goal is, is to make certain that not only do you all understand the importance of philanthropy in what's all around you, but we hope in the future you'll have the same kind of enthusiasm that people like Jerry Stead have for philanthropy. Now, Phil's Day helps show our entire university community where private support makes a difference in the daily life of the University of Iowa. On Phil's Day, we also are able to say thank you to our generous donors by recognizing the impact of their gifts. So I hope you've all been able to participate in the Phil's Day activities on campus today. There's still time, so don't fear if you haven't done some of these things yet, there's still time to do them. They're hard to miss. I hope you've seen and enjoyed the posters and the bows around campus, reminding us of how widespread and important philanthropy is in the life and the work that goes on here at the University of Iowa. I also hope that you've had a chance to sign a postcard today. Those postcards will thank our generous supporters and donors for all that they continue to do to help us meet our goals and our aspirations, and to make a UI education the absolute best that it can be. So as I said, there's still plenty of the day left. Continue showing your support of philanthropy's impact on our campus and in our lives. Now today, today we want the entire university community, and especially you, our students, to feel in very real ways the power of philanthropy and the direct role that it plays in the learning, discovery, and engagement that goes on all across our campus every day. One of the most important, and I have to say personally rewarding parts of my job as president, is building relationships with our alumni, our friends, and our donors. When I get to meet these wonderful supporters, I realize just how passionate they are about the University of Iowa. It tends to be something we both share in common. It's also my task and my privilege to help the university and those who so enthusiastically support us come together to make our mutual dreams and aspirations an absolute reality. So I'm personally thrilled today to have Jerry and Mary Joyce Stead with us. And I'm delighted that Jerry has agreed to share his thoughts about and his experience with philanthropy. He's going to show us how profoundly it can make an impact on our lives. Now, the Steads are not only among the most generous supporters of the University of Iowa, but they're among our most important visionary friends. This university as a whole is so much better today because the Steads have not only shared their treasure, but also they share in their time and their talent in helping our university along the path to excellence. Again, I want to thank Jerry and Mary Joy both for joining us and for sharing in a few minutes, some inspiring words with us. Now, we're also joined today by another very inspiring person, one of you, Dan Kolb, who will speak about how philanthropy has had an impact on his education, and then he's going to do the formal introduction of Jerry Stead. 
Let me tell you a little bit, bit about Dan. Dan is a junior accounting major from Aurora, Illinois, and he is also serving as this coming year's executive director for Dance Marathon. If there's one student group that's a leader in philanthropy on this campus, it's Dance Marathon. This has raised millions of dollars for the UI Children's Hospital. How many of you have participated in Dance Marathon? I'm gonna guess quite a few of you. Good money. Thank you for that. that Please account, keep up yeah, the great work. Now, Dan, with his own work in supporting children's health care at Iowa, it's especially appropriate that he introduce Jerry today, since this week we're celebrating Jerry and Mary Joy's generous gift to our pediatrics department, which will now, as of yesterday officially, be named the Stead Family Department of Pediatrics. Dan has been involved with Dance Marathon for four years. After joining his first dance marathon at the urging of his Pi Kappa Phi fraternity brothers, Dan discovered that, and he says this, Dance Marathon is not just a great philanthropic organization that raises millions of dollars, but it's also a giant family fighting to provide hope to hundreds of kids and their families. And he's got it exactly right. That's what Dance Marathon is all about. Dan says that Dance Marathon has inspired me and pushed me to be involved in something greater than myself. And fundamentally, that's what philanthropy is all about. Dan has also been rewarded for his achievements through the power of philanthropy in the form of privately funded scholarships, including the Iowa Commitment Scholarship and the Henry and Regina Markowitz Scholarship. Please help me welcome Dan Holt. Good afternoon. Can we all give President Mason another round of applause for our conclude er, for that concludes eight outstanding years as president of the University of Iowa? So to begin, I want to thank President Mason and the UI Foundation for giving me the opportunity to introduce such a remarkable man. As President Mason said, my name is Dan Kolb, and the reason I have the privilege to stand up here is because I have been inspired by the philanthropic efforts of not only our alumni and community supporters, but all the students and organizations here at the University of Iowa. Whether it is Dance Marathon, Fraternity and Sorority Life, or the hundreds of other organizations here on campus, you all are the reason the university is changing the lives of so many kids and families that are fighting an unimaginable battle. Until coming to Iowa, I had never been a huge fundraiser. In fact, I was forced to join Dance Marathon, as President Mason said, by one of my fraternity brothers, and I couldn't even tell you what philanthropy was before coming here. <laughs> that, yeah. that changed immediately after, after I attended my first big event, DM19. After seeing the drive in thousands of DM students and hearing the stories of what these kids go through on a daily basis, this passion immediately hit me. I realized that life doesn't revolve on what Dan needs or wants because there are so many kiddos out there that don't get to grow up to be firefighters or doctors or live out their childhood dreams. Dance Marathon has shown me that not only is it a student-run organization that raises millions of dollars each year for a great cause, but Dance Marathon is a giant family comprised of students, donors from all over the world, community members and businesses, doctors and hospital staff, and most importantly, our kiddos and families treated here at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. And there's one goal that brings all these constituents together, and that is to defeat pediatric cancer. And this year, I'm so privileged to be a part of this family and to now help lead this 365-day national mo movement for the University of Iowa's 22nd Dance Marathon. So that is what philanthropy is to me, a group of selfless individuals who come together for one goal and in doing so, better the life of someone who deserves so much more. So though we students work hard year-round to achieve our goals, the impact we we make cannot be achieved without the support we receive from our alumni and other community supporters. One man in particular, Mr. Jerry Stebb, continues to make his mark on the University of Iowa through serving on university boards, leading various campaigns, and making major donations to different programs and initiatives here at the University of Iowa and just where, really wherever he goes. Mr. Stebb re received his BBA from Iowa in 1965, and he has since went on to lead large corporations, including being the CEO of Square D Company, the CEO of AT&T Global Information uh, Solutions, the CEO of Ingram Micro, and today he is the Executive Chairman of IHS, IHS Incorporated. But in addition to these large roles, Mr. Stead has still managed to serve on 34 corporate boards during his career, and he has chaired 16 capital drives for nonprofit organizations. In fact, 
he even told us today at lunch that he still manages to run four to five miles every morning, and that's that's really impressive. So, <laughs> the growth and achievements that Mr. Stead has helped these corporations achieve cannot be understated. But what truly defines Mr. Stead as a distinguished alumni and, phil and philanthropist is his continued dedication to charitable efforts both here at the University of Iowa and everywhere he goes. In 2003, Mr. Stead and his wife, Mary Joyce Stead, donated $25 million to the Tippy College of Business to support a variety of programs, including one of the largest computer labs on campus. And as an accounting major in the Tippy College of Business, I can't thank you enough for that computer lab because I definitely use that every day. Um, additionally, the Steads have donated $20 million to the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital to further help develop pediatric research and medicine. And in honor of these contributions, as President Mason said, the Department of Pediatrics is now called the UI Stead Family Department of Pediatrics. Being involved for Dance Marathon for four years now and seeing how impactful the money we raise for pediatric cancer has been, we can't explain how, thank we are, how thankful we are for your generosity. Whether a business student, medical student, or having received care at the hospital, you have been touched by the Stead's generosity. Individuals like Mr. Stead not only make me proud to be a philanthropist, but make me proud to be a Hawkeye. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our 2015 Life with Phil speaker, Mr. Jerry Stead. Good job, thank you. Which button, Sally? Sally's always told me what buttons to push, so. <laughs> How's that? Am I okay? No? Good. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Thank you so much. I look forward to sharing uh, a few of our ideas. I do want to follow up on two things, though. Uh, this morning I was doing an interview with the Daily Island and was asked about how important uh, the president's position was for philanthropy. And that's, uh, that's as good a setup. We'll see if he writes what I said, because we'll never know. But I said, Sally was the, uh, and I've been blessed over the years to know a lot of them, Sally was the very best example as a president to lead a university in an incredible capital drive. So Sally, you are the best. The, the first thing I'm going to talk about is what does Phil or philanthropy mean to me? I'm going to give you uh, just a few words and then I'm going to share it with you. What it means to me and Mary Joy is the opportunity to help great people do great things. What it means is that uh, work, and this is the way we actually think about it, Mary Joy and I talk a lot about this, work for a cause, not for applause. Live life, <coughs> excuse me, to express uh, not to impress. Live life to express, not to impress. And then this one I really like. Don't strive to make your presence noticed, just make your absence felt. <clears throat> so if you think about what philanthropy is, that's what it's all about. Mary Joy and I, as uh, Dan mentioned, uh, graduated here. Actually, it'll be 50 years in five weeks in a day that we graduated from the University of Iowa. Uh, and uh, loved every minute of when we were here. We started dating when we were 14. Uh, got married the day before Mary Joy turned uh, 19. Uh, went to the University of Iowa. Uh, lived in a 44 by 10 foot trailer. Uh, at, and by the way, it was there at Forest View Trailer Court until 1993. Uh, and then I think it collapsed of age. <laughs> But we loved every, <coughs> excuse me, every minute of it. The one thing I noticed, by the way, that running this morning is there's a lot of allergies out right now, and I've uh, picked up one, so I'll keep drinking water as we go today. Uh, we uh, had the perfect system, if you will. Both of our children were born here. Uh, we had everything down to an art. Uh, I worked 40 hours a week doing drafting over in the county courthouse, still there. Uh, it was a wonderful job. I got 40 hours of work, and as long as I got it done each week, uh, the, the uh, county uh, uh, engineer, Ray Justin, said fine. Uh, what do you think I made a, an hour doing actually world-class drafting? Dollar 20. 
and I was delighted <laughs> to get it. Uh, then uh, to help things along, uh, Ray, the county engineer, uh, allowed Mary Joy and I to mow his lawn and do trimming. Uh, and so we uh, got $5 a week for that. And that was a big deal then because we could go then and buy maid rights at the maid right shop as a bonus, <laughs> which, we, which we did regularly. Uh, we loved every minute of it and we actually started back then. We were both blessed to be raised by families that believed in giving to others from the very beginning. Uh, both Mary Joy his parents and mine gave and gave and gave, as did our grandparents and, and great-grandparents. So uh, we started, uh, we were both uh, as sophomores after our marriage of giving to our church. Both of our uh, sons were baptized in the United Methodist Church. It sits on the corner across from the uh, school of business. Uh, and we started, we were asked to uh, teach Sunday school. So remember, we're 19, right? 20, I guess, when we were asked. We had no idea how to do that. So said, of course, we'll do that. Because what is, what is philanthropy? It's uh, giving three Ts, time, talent, and treasure. And if you're ever fortunate enough, like we've been, to give some of each, it's an amazing thing to do. And then we started, uh, I learned yesterday, I was asked a great question in an interview. Uh, how many of you know when the University of Iowa Foundation started, other than the foundation members? <laughs> 1956, very interesting. And the question I got was, did I know, did we give at the beginning to uh, the University of Iowa Foundation? I said, no. Uh, we actually gave our senior year, was the beginning, to uh, the University of Iowa Alumni Association. Uh, because that was a big deal to become a member and get the I think it was a quarterly magazine then, as I remember. And it was a wonderful way of staying in touch. As the world uh, moved forward, uh, we were blessed uh, with the opportunity to give more and more. We moved 23 times together over the years, in the last 53 years together. And every place we moved, we thought about how can we make a difference? How can we help others do things that they might not be able to do if we don't help, help them in some way or the other. Uh, I was blessed to uh, lead seven public corporations over the last 37 years. I was blessed to lead about 350,000 people over that period of time. And every morning when I get up, I always start out by thinking, how can I help everybody have a great day? How do I help great people do great things? How can I make a difference to every student at the University of Iowa and other places that we give? And how can I make sure that we maximize our investments? We don't, uh, philanthropy to us is not giving, it's investing. Philanthropy to us is investing in the future. We were blessed, uh, we thought about, we talked about it at lunch that Dan was mentioning. We realized when we were at the University of Iowa, people before us had given lots, and that's why we were able to be here. We realized that if we did that same thing for the future, we could make a difference, and we try to yet to this day for every person. So if you think about how blessed we all are, to be part of a wonderful institution and how blessed we are for those that have given in the past, that's a great way to feel wonderful gratitude for the opportunity to give for the future. That's the most exciting part of philanthropy is the joy of giving, the joy of getting back because of the gratitude that you get. We, uh, over the years, uh, have been able to contribute far more than we ever thought we would be able to. And I can tell you today that for uh, us giving, the more we give, the more we get. And the more we get, the more we can give for the future. And that'll happen to every one of you over time. I would suggest a few things on that subject. One is pick one, two, or three things that makes a real difference, that gets you excited about what you're doing. Hopefully, when you become alumni or even when you're attending the university here, this will be at least one forever and ever and ever. I, I, you'll find out, I'm sure, when you come back, like Mary Jo and I do, 
uh, now almost 50 years later. It's the most exciting place in the world to touch all of you, to feel your energy, and to see the magnificent change that's going on. To see and be a small part of touching many, many people. We made a decision uh, years ago when we were in a position to make a big difference to give to five very important uh, leadership organization ideas. We've always believed that if we can help create great leaders in the future, they'll touch great people and we'll touch millions before we're done. Those five happen to be uh, medical, uh, research, education, religion, and business. Uh, here, we're blessed with touching all four every day with everything that we invest in. The decisions we made, I, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, when uh, Dr. Jean became the head of the uh, University of Iowa Organizations and Hospitals, uh, we met, we actually met, we talked about it at uh, Gary Fetke's house one night at dinner. Carol's sitting here today, she'd probably tell you what we, you've, you cooked us that night, because uh, she says I never eat enough of her food, but I really enjoy her food, and that night we had a great evening. And I thought about, man, this is incredible. We'd already done a lot, wanted to continue to with the business uh, school and what a great organization it was. Jean is an incredibly unique person. And, and, and here's what I hope you all become, because he's a role model for me, which is he had a dream, he turned a dream into a vision, and he turned the vision into reality. That's what the world's all about. If you want to think about philanthropy, have that dream, turn that dream into a vision that you can make happen, and then turn that vision into reality. Sally's done that if you walk throughout this campus today, and John's done that in a magnificent way. You gotta feel good when you can do that kind of support. You have to feel good when you are able to help people do things and make a difference for others all the time. Other things about philanthropy that I, I believe are incredibly important for everybody in this room. You can make a difference for yourself as well as every other person. I can't think of a day that Mary Joy and I have uh, not gotten up together and thought about, wow, what we're seeing happen is bringing us the greatest joy. The wonderful thing about philanthropy is helping others, but the, the, the joy you get back, the ability to feel good about what you've been able to, to do and make a difference. We'll continue to do that for many years to come. A few years ago, I was reading, uh, I was getting ready to do actually a graduation speech, and uh, I came across this, and I've used it kind of as our logo since then. We've concluded that the accumulation of wealth, even if we could achieve it, is an insufficient reason for living. <clears throat> we have concluded the accumulation of wealth, even if we could achieve it, is an insufficient reason for living. When we reach the end of our days, we will look backward at something far more meaningful. We must look backward at something far more meaningful than the pursuit of homes, land, cars, jewelry, stocks, bonds. Nor is fame of any lasting benefit. Nor is fame of any lasting benefit. We'll consider our earthly existence to have been wasted unless we can recall a loving family and a consistent investment in the lives of others, of people in an earnest attempt to serve those people to help us and help themselves. Nothing else makes sense. Nothing else makes sense. If you think about that, that's really what it's all about. It's the ability, it's the incredible ability to pick something, as I said, two or three things that are meaningful and help those. Now I want to talk also about our belief in investment versus giving. Uh, it's in a sense giving, but investment, I'll use the University of Iowa hospital grants we've given as an example today. Each year we get a report. It's a wonderful book. Uh, I carry it all over the world and speak about the University of Iowa 
and speak about what's happened here and what's going on. And it's a report on each of the commitments that the, the University of Iowa has done with our investments. And boy, is that exciting. It, because it's setting out timetables, it's setting out goals, it's setting out an effort to make a difference in the future. And to be able to measure that and help it. To be able to see if it's going to be the success that we hoped it would be. And uh, Mary Jo and I get so excited when we get that and share it with hundreds of people. It's been a great way for me to introduce the University of Iowa and what an incredible institution we have here to actually thousands of people. I get a lot of speeches. I talk about two things usually. Uh, one is uh, outside in external intellectual curiosity about who our customers are. And the first one I talk about is the University of Iowa Hospitals as an amazing role model of that. How many of you have been uh, users of the hospital services? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I've never been any place close to the role model that this, uh, this operation provides for helping us feel good because they're totally focused on us as customers. It's a wonderful feeling. So I talk about that and then I talk about here are the investments that we've made to help make a greater difference with things that are already good to make it great. And we can all do that. Uh, people say, well, yeah, you know, that's easy, Jerry, you made a lot of money. Uh, actually, that's not the way it worked. Uh, but we, we lived uh, literally on $2,900 a year and we're very happy when we were at the University of Iowa. Uh, we, uh, over every year from there forward to, to today, uh, have been blessed with uh, increased uh, opportunity to give. And we, we always set up part goals. Mary Jo and I were talking about it yesterday. Uh, we had two things we did every month with our money. One was give gifting, and the second one was to savings. And Mary Joy reminded me there was periods of time when in the winter, uh, if we lived in Minnesota at one point, where the, the fuel bills would be high uh, and the insurance policy came due, that we didn't get to put money in savings, but we always put money in giving. And then we'd make up the savings the way we've been successful together after at least 53 years, and I've said this, is that we've agreed on every one of the investments we've ever made. And we worked, to, I, I couldn't have done anything uh, half of what I've done, or a third of what I've done as the CEO of many companies, et cetera, without Mary Joy uh, running our lives. I mean, just so you know, <coughs> when I was in college, uh, and we were on 2900 a, a year. She gave me $2 a week. I could do anything I wanted with it. <laughs> right? So today, we, you know, 53 years later, what do you think I get a week? Your guess, this good trivia question? I get $47 a week. So <laughs> think about that. That's 22 times as much. Uh, but. Uh, it, and I, I made this comment today, and I really mean it, because that's the way we've lived. Uh, about a month ago, I called and uh, asked Mary Joy to wire a million dollars to a, a charity, uh, one of our investments. And she did, didn't blink, sent it. That night, she called me about a purse she wanted to buy for $150 <laughs> and whether we should make it or not. Now, that's the great part of philanthropy. That's the great part of giving. Well, you'd never have a second thought about that, but you have always a second thought about where you're gonna put your money so that you can give more with time. And I can't stress enough how amazing it's been to me and Mary Joy over all these years of, I'm not, and I'm not kidding, the more we give, the more we get. And the more we get, the more we give. We're working hard today to make sure that our third generation, our grandchildren, have that same belief system. Our sons did. I mean, they, you know, they were both born here at the University of Iowa Hospitals, lived all over the world with us, both very successful and very proud of them on their own. We want to make sure our grandchildren do not have what sometimes because would be called the third generation wealth disease, which is got more money than they know what to do with. 
So when the grandkids turned five, we started asking them what charity they wanted to give to at birthday and Christmas. Uh, and <coughs> today, uh, that's automatic. Now we have uh, uh, five grandchildren, four of whom are incredible uh, with that. And we have a, si a fifth one who is a great surprise, who's uh, just turned six years old. So 23, 22, 18, 15, and six. And it won't surprise you the six-year-old is spoiled really badly by Mary Joy and I and everybody else. But when she turned five, we asked uh, London what gifts she wanted to give to someone else for Christmas. And so we used Heifer's association with the, the magazine. Uh, first, we had to get her to understand that the animals in there were not for her. <laughs> and once we got through that, she picked chickens, rabbits, and sheep, and actually explained to us why she picked each one. So that was great. First year it was perfect. Last year, this year at Christmas, we had everybody together in New Zealand where our youngest son and his family live. And it was hilarious because uh, uh, London's a very quick learner. Uh, so she picked two water buffalo uh, this last year. Now sheep, chickens, uh, uh, etc., et uh, cost 150. You know what two water buffalo cost? $800. <laughs> so it took her one year to learn what gratitude of joy of giving. <laughs> and so she's going to be a superstar. And I hope someday she comes here and is a role model for, for you all. But it works. And it works once you start. It becomes a discipline of belief. I can't stress enough, though, how to pick two or three things and stay at it. Over the years, we've given to a lot of different organizations. But we've always tried to stay focused on three things that made the biggest difference. And I'll give you examples of how we've been able to do that. University of Iowa has and continues to be our, our number one effort and will for years to come. Second one, uh, my mom had Alzheimer's for 14 years, most devastating disease in the world today. Uh, I joined the National Alzheimer's Association to try to make a difference. I felt like they were not moving quick enough, uh, and they were putting money here, there, and everywhere without focus. So 12 years ago, we started the Alzheimer's Research Institute uh, in Arizona. Today, or April 15th, we announced a $350 million prevention study, largest in the world, two vaccines, and uh, a 30% probability of one of them being successful. May not sound like a big number, as I've learned as we work through that, that's a magnificent number if it works. And so we now said, okay, that was great. We've done everything we can. We'll know in four years if that's a success. Uh, that was a major investment we made. We've now taken on two other tasks. And I, I use these as examples for you to only to think about, because the more you give, the more you get, and the more you can give. Alzheimer's is a worldwide disease. Obesity is a worldwide disease, and we've now taken that on. Uh, today, through working with Salvation Army, we've touched uh, almost 15,000 young people and 2,000 families uh, of helping educate how important it is, and by the way, providing them healthy food so we can make that difference for them. Our goal there is to bend the curve on obesity. So if you take those two, that's about 65% of the worldwide cost of health today. The third one we've taken on is uh, mental illness. Uh, today, mental illness, only about 5% of all dollars on health is spent on mental illness. And yet about 25% of, of health issues is created by mental illness. So we're now focused on that. We're financing a study by the World Health Organization to see if we can prove productivity-wise from an organization that Mary Joy chair is on the chair, uh, board of uh, uh, called Fountain House with 1,200 clubhouses around the world with a 70% success rate of helping those that were ill, uh, mentally ill, to be successful. And they measure that, meaning after they've gone through in recovery, two years on a job. So those three we've taken on because we want to be able to touch the world and hopefully make a difference. Will we make it? I don't know. Is it worth the risk? Yes. 
we were talking at lunch, uh, one of the things that you should all be thinking about is that uh, as you operate in the world and are a great success, as I know you all will be, as you have the opportunity to provide the philanthropy like we do, you'll make mistakes. Uh, and some of them will, may not work out, but I've trained my organizations that I've led over the years to uh, learn from failure, <laughs> learn from mistakes, take corrective action and move on. And as I, as I said at lunch, I try to uh, stretch the rubber band to change as far as I can, can stretch it, because that's the only way you'll know how great you can be. That's happening at this university every day. Now, if you stretch it too far, what happens? You, you break it. So then you know you went too far, so you change priorities, allocate resources, and you move on. And that's what I would suggest that you all do in the years ahead. That's what I would suggest you all do as you have the opportunity to make an incredible difference for years to come. I can promise you that you'll have the same kind of gratitude and joy that Mary Jo and I have and will have. Here's the way I'll close today, which are thoughts that I've shared for some time on this particular subject. You say yes to the idea of impossible. You say yes to the idea of the impossible. I believe there is no impossible. I believe that if we set the strong enough goal, if we get the right people, and if we get the right resources, we will be successful. I don't believe there is such a thing as impossible. So you say yes to the idea of the impossible. You give up the things you're, <coughs> excuse me, you are comfortable with, like Mary Joy's not buying the purse. You give up the things you are comfortable with. You always accept gifts of wisdom from strangers. One of the great ways we've learned over the years of what to do is listening to others. I believe uh, when I do lectures at universities, uh, the, when I get the question, what's the most important thing I can learn? Learn to listen. If you don't do anything else, learn to listen. When I interview people uh, to hire, I say, tell me about yourself and then get quiet. Learn to listen. Learn to listen about what will make a difference. And what we've learned, Mary Jo and I, is that the great way to do that is indeed to accept the gifts of wisdom from people you've never met, from strangers. Stand up to be counted. Be courageous. Stand up to be counted. Demand truth from how great yourself can be and those around you. And you honor those who put their gifts of love however small, alongside yours. I will promise you, if you can make those things happen in that order, you'll feel the same great group of, of a great uh, feeling of gratitude that Mary Joy and I have. You'll feel the great success of what makes a difference, and you'll be a great person yourself. So I would hope every one of you will do and be as successful as I believe you can be and will be, and when you are, remember, the best way is to give. Wait, get up every morning and think about, how do I help great people do great things? Thank you very much. Thank you. It's for you. Yeah. Great job. For you. No, no, that's for you, buddy. Let's, uh, let's thank Jerry Stead once again for an incredible, incredible talk today. I also want to thank Mary Joy for joining him. The two of them are truly dynamic and, and inspirational. Every time I've had the opportunity to be with them, it's just always a lot of fun. So I'm glad you all got to share in that experience today as well. Let me also thank Dan Kolb, as well as my faculty, staff, and students who all came out this afternoon to support this incredible afternoon and this incredible talk. 
Thank you so much for being part of this. I think you can now see how important it is for a generous donor to share his story directly with us, just as Jerry has done this afternoon. Philanthropy is about real people, both donors and beneficiaries, and about the real impact that it has on people's lives. So as we close today's Life with Phil, please think about the meaning of Phil's day. Think about and be grateful to all the alumni and friends of the university who are donors, making gifts to better your education or your work with the university. And think about the important role that giving back can and does and will play in your own life with Phil. No one can say it or has said it better than Jerry Stead just did. So thank you again for coming. Thank you again, Jerry, for sharing your story and for inspiring all of these young future philanthropists. Thanks, and have a great day.